Okay, so we're gonna start with the ingredients. We're gonna start with one packet of yeast, one tablespoon of sugar, one teaspoon of sugar to proof the yeast, uh, or to activate the yeast, sorry. One teaspoon of salt, one tablespoon of melted butter, one and a quarter cup of warm water, ideally heated to about 105 to 107 degrees, and about four cups of flour. First, we're gonna start by activating the yeast. We're gonna go ahead and take our water, um, and you wanna temp it, like I said, at around 105 to 110 degrees. If you don't have a thermometer, it takes about 45 seconds in the microwave. Um, we'll, get, we'll get you there. Um, so once that's the right temp, which it is, we can go ahead and take the little bit of the teaspoon of sugar we have, dump that guy in, take the yeast, dump that guy in, and then we're just gonna get a spoon and stir that until it's well mixed. The reason you do this first is because it takes about anywhere from five to 10 minutes for the yeast to activate. And you'll know it's activated once the, there, you'll see foam and like kind of bubbles forming at the top. All right, while that's activating, we'll just go ahead and set that to the side. And we can combine at least some of the dry ingredients um, like the salt and the sugar. So we'll have the four and a half cups of flour here. We'll go ahead and add the tablespoon of sugar. Now you can replace this with honey um, if you want, um, just to, as a healthier alternative. So we'll go ahead and sprinkle that in. And then we'll add the teaspoon of salt as well. We're gonna hold off on adding the butter because it's a wet ingredient uh, until we add the uh, fully activated yeast. Um, so again, wait about five to eight minutes and you'll see the bubbles starting to form on the top. So while we're waiting for the uh, yeast to activate, I'm just gonna talk through some of the tools you might need. Um, so I'm gonna use this uh, spatula that Deepu got me to just kind of mix the yeast uh, or mix the ingredients together. Um, but if you don't have that, a wooden spoon works great. Um, the main thing is use the back of the spoon though, because when you're mixing it with the back of the spoon, it's a lot easier to stir it. Um, and it's a lot easier to kind of bring the dough together without it kind of sticking to the front. So don't use the front of the spoon, use the, the handle of the spoon to stir it together. Um, that'll be the best way to do it. Um, another tool you might need is a dough scraper or a bench knife basically. Um, this is good for basically just cutting the dough, scraping the dough off the counter, um, anything like that. Uh, and then the other other useful tool is just basically like a dough scraper or a plastic one, um, just to basically scrape the edges of the bowl or get dough off your fingers or anything like that. And you'll see me use these tools um, throughout the rest of the video. Our yeast is fully activated now. You can kind of see how the bubbles are forming on that guy there. You see how it's kind of foamy and frothy. That means it's activated and it's ready to go. So let's go ahead and grab our uh, dry ingredients here. Make sure you use the back of the handle to kind of mix this together. Um, it just makes it a lot, your life a lot easier. And what you're doing here is you're just going to bring it together until it starts forming uh, like a shaggy ball, basically. I didn't have to add any additional water. Now, depending on how you like to work with your dough, you may want to add maybe a tablespoon or so of water. I'm gonna leave it for now just because it's easier to work with drier dough when you're first starting out. So let's just plop this directly on the counter and we'll start kneading. And it'll take probably about 10 to 15 minutes to basically knead it. And 
the way you'll you'll kind of just see the gluten start to forming, and I'll I'll show you what I mean. You can you can do what's called a window pane test, and that uh, basically determines if there's enough gluten form for the for the dough. Okay, so I've been kneading this for about maybe eight minutes or so. It's starting to come together really well. You can see the dough is nice and smooth. It's got like a nice feel to it. Um, and this is when you want to kind of test it for its like gluten development basically. And you'll you'll see, uh, this, is, this is what's called the window pane test. Basically take the dough from somewhere in the middle and you try to stretch it between your fingers like this. And you'll see that it'll start to become a little transparent. And what you want to do is you want to act, you want light to go through it, but without it tearing in the middle. And so you can kind of see how you, you can tell, you can kind of see how my fingers are kind of shining through this, but without the dough ripping, that means it's pretty much there. The gluten is developed within the dough, so it's got enough strength to, uh, to make bread. Um, so we'll give this maybe another minute or so of just kneading and then we'll just shape it and we'll set it to proof. Now when you're proofing it, there's a couple of ways to, a couple of places you can put it that um, will, will aid that. Um, and the main thing is basically like temperature and time. And so what I normally do is uh, you, I put it in the oven, but with just the oven light on, which provides a nice constant temperature that's about roughly five to 10 degrees potentially higher than your than your kitchen um, just because there's no wind and it's contained. Um, so just turn the oven light on and put this in a bowl and kind of put that in there and cover it and let that sit for about a half an hour to an hour um, until it's basically doubled in size. Another good place is to put it is basically on top of your fridge because it's nice and warm above your fridge. If you have a room, um, you can do that um, and, and that'll that'll work as well. Um, and the other option is if you do have a proof setting on your oven, which is basically 100 degrees, um, you can also put it put it in that. Um, but any of those places generally work. Um, it's just a matter of you may have to leave it a little bit longer, a little bit less, depending on the conditions in your own kitchen. wall right there. Now we take this guy and we're going to put it into a bowl. So we're going to put it into this guy right here. And like I said, I'm going to go ahead and throw it in, uh, in my oven with the oven light on um, for about a half an hour to an hour or until it doubles in size. Another good way uh, to test if it's proved is the uh, like the finger poking test basically. Um, so if you take dough and you poke with your finger, the actual indentation of your finger should remain in the dough and should just depress about halfway. And you'll see how that, that fingerprint's gone right now and that's because it's not proved at all. Um, that means it's underproved. If it's overproved, the fingerprint the indentation will actually just remain completely, and that means it's over. But I'll, I'll show you that again later in this video as well. All right, so we've had the dough uh, proofing in the oven for about 30 to 45 minutes. Um, you can see 
after uncover is in covered proofing for that long. You can see it's about doubled in size. Um, and we can use the finger test to kind of see how it's proofed. Now you see how that indentation is kind of remaining in there. I would say probably this dough is a little bit overproofed. So I would suggest you leave it for about 30 minutes and, and test to see if it's, if it's there. It'll still turn out fine, but you can tell it's a little bit overproofed from that test. All right, so we'll just remove it from the bowl. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and divide it into equal pieces and shape it. And one thing you'll notice is I'm not putting any extra flour down on the counter. You'll see that I'm literally, I only added the flour I did to the initial recipe. And that's because if you add, you've already added all the flour the bread needs. And so if you go to add more, it's actually gonna just make the bread drier and denser and you're not gonna enjoy it as much. So try not to add any additional flour if you absolutely don't. So we've now had them uh, proofing on the counter for about 20 minutes or so. Um, you can you can choose to leave them a little longer. I, I had them proofing initially a little longer, so 
just gonna go ahead and pop them in the oven now. Um, you can see we have two trays here just to give them a little bit of room. Um, what we're gonna go ahead and do now though is uh, score the score the loaves. And uh, so you're gonna want your parents' help for this because you're gonna probably end up using a razor blade or a very sharp knife to go ahead and score these. Um, so what we're gonna do is actually just slice the bread on top, somewhat like this, across all of them, okay? And what that allows is just a point for the steam to be released through the bread while it's baking so it doesn't fracture everywhere. So. Okay, so they've been baking for about 25 minutes or so now. Um, you can see that they're golden brown on top. Um, a good way to tell if they're done is actually, and be careful, they're a little warm, is just to bring them up and you can just tap and you can hear that kind of hollow sound. That's how you know the bread's done. Um, you can see the score lines uh, that we made kind of like expanded and opened up here. Um, you can see score lines here that have opened up. Um, and so now all we got to do is kind of just take them and we'll put them on this cooling rack here. And again, these are going to be really warm, so just be careful. We'll let them cool for probably 15 to 20 minutes, basically until they're uh, cool enough to handle. Um, then you can cut them, make, your, make some tortas, or just eat them plain. And you're good to go. Have fun making.